Hi everybody, my name is Zach Bennett. I'm a Microsoft Teams MVP and Principal Architect at LoopUp. And today we're gonna to be talking around auto attendance. These are your main lines into your business or your IVRs, interactive voice response. The big thing with these auto attendants is you're gonna be able to have your time of day routing capabilities for your Teams phone. Let's jump straight into the Teams Admin Center. and We're gonna walk through what an auto attendant is and some of the options that you have to be able to configure them. So on the left hand side under voice in your Teams Admin Center, we're gonna to go to auto attendants and I'm gonna talk through one of these demo ones that I've already created in here, but you can come inside of here, see all the auto attendants that are created against your tenant and also add, edit, delete, and also view some reports against these uh, auto attendants as well. So let's just jump into this test auto attendant. The first thing you're gonna see at the top is the ability to name your auto attendant. I would always recommend giving it a name that links to what that auto attendant is for, such as Spanish mainline office or something like that, for example. What we can see here is we have two numbers that are actually assigned to this auto attendant. We'll come onto this a little later, but the way this is done is via the resource accounts which are attached to the auto attendant, okay? One thing that we are asked right at the beginning of our auto attendants as well is do we require an operator? Now an operator is optional, you don't have to assign one of these, but during your flow, if you want to say, press zero to go to an operator, this is the operator that's set. The options that we have in here are no operator, a single person inside your organization, a voice app, a resource account, which would be assigned to a, a voice application, or an external phone number, okay? Commonly, if you have more than one operator or receptionist on a particular auto attendant, what you can do is choose voice app, which is another auto attendant or call queue, and then place multiple people inside of that call queue and then assign that as your operator. We'll leave it as no operator for now. The next thing we are asked is what time zone we would like this to be in. This is where it will figure out what is considered in and out of hours for this particular queue. So you can come inside of here, you can actually search your country or your, your, your city for the particular time code. So I'm just gonna put London in here for now. And then we're also asked what language we would like to associate with this. So we have, of course, all the different languages that you can choose with your Microsoft products or your Teams phone. I'm just gonna choose English and we have different dialects of English as well in here. So if I prefer a British accent, I can choose United Kingdom. If I would choose uh, prefer a Canadian accent, then I can choose Canada for the language. What this will do, it will tell the system when it's reading out prompts, what language and what dialect to speak uh, those prompts in. The one we have here at the bottom as well is voice inputs. So this is to allow uh, customers or people that are ringing into your auto attendant, allow them the ability to use voice inputs to navigate your cues. So for example, instead of pressing one on their dial pad, they could just say sales and that would take them through to the sales queue. This also has to be enabled if you want to utilize the dial by name feature and you want people to be able to speak the voices for that dial by name. Let's go next onto the call flow section now. The first thing we're greeted with in here is the greeting options. So this is uh, what we would like when someone hits that auto attendant, what's the first thing that they hear? So we can choose no greeting or we can choose to actually upload an audio file in here or a text to speech uh, prompt as well, which will be read out to the user as they hit the queue. Now we have the call routing options, okay? So with an auto attendant, we have the ability to, when someone's hit that queue, to just disconnect the call if you would like to. You can redirect that call. So that redirect can be to a person in the organization. Again, that's one person or a voice app, which again is another call queue or another auto attendant, a resource account, which is attached to a voice app, an external phone number, 
or we can transfer that to the voicemail of a Microsoft 365 group here. Now, with auto attendance or with an IVR, what most people are going to do, or most, what most people are going to configure their queues to be like, is this menu options. Okay, so this is your standard IVR response of press one for sales, press two for support, those sorts of uh, configurations. So we choose the play menu options here. One thing we are uh, given straight away is the force listen. So if this is turned on, what what will happen is it will read out all of the options bef uh, before letting the end user choose where they would like to go. If they start bashing one, you know, as soon as it starts reading out the prompt, it won't go anywhere until it's finished reading out all the rest of the prompts. This can be turned on and off simply from the toggle. Um, one thing I would recommend is if you are purely making an auto attendant for a dial by name, it's usually good practice to leave this force listen on just in case of if the person's in a noisy environment or accidentally presses a key or something uh, and it picks up the dial by name, it won't stop the auto attendant completely. You're able to um, not give false positives with this force listen turned on. So we have the actual greeting now for the queue. So we can play an upload, uh, sorry, we can upload a file. So upload an MP3, like we mentioned before with the other greeting, or we can actually type in here, press one for sales, press, press two for support, something like that. And it will read it out in the text-to-speech version as well. Actually setting those menu options is done here under the set menu options. We can assign a dial key. So within Microsoft Teams, you can choose uh, zero, one through nine and a hash and star. If I just choose one here, the voice command, because I had voice inputs on, is gonna be sales. And then I'm now able to redirect this particular option somewhere else in the auto attendant. So I can choose for that to go to the operator if that was configured, we have none set in this one. We can choose to send to one particular person, a voice application, a resource account that's assigned to a voice application, a voicemail, an external phone number, or what we can do as well is play announcements, okay? So for this particular one, we would choose sales, and then you just search for a queue in here. We search the destination, so let's say it's this test call queue here is my sales queue. I could choose that. So when a user presses one, they're gonna be redirected to the sales test call queue here. Alternatively, if I say I want to do two for support, but I'm actually gonna play an announcement this time and I can um, say uh, our support is offline, something like that. Uh, for example, but that would be the announcement here, okay? We have the directory search at the bottom that I mentioned before. So this is where we can choose if you'd like directory search. Um, this is the dial by name or dial by extension functionality that you can attach to an auto attendant. Um, just turn this to none for now, but you are able to, to choose that in here. Next, once you've got your call flow configured how you would like for your auto attendant, this is where we set your time of day routine. So what actually, when this call flow will take, um, will happen and um, when it will not, or where you can choose to do an after hours call flow configuration. So in here, very simply put, you can choose um, untoggled days. So we have Sunday and Saturday here, we are considered closed and we've got uh, open from 12 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's 17 hours, and it actually shows when this queue would be considered closed on the particular days here as well. So what do we do out of hours? So this is where we can set a different set of call flow options, or the same if you would prefer, um, for when out of hours. So let's say, 6 p.m. on a Monday, someone hits our queue. Right now, there would be no greeting played and it would just disconnect the call. 
not a very good experience for the end user. So what we can do is add a greeting message and say, sorry, we are closed. Please leave a voicemail, something like that. That will play when a user hits this out of hours. And then instead of disconnecting, we can redirect that call. You'll notice that we've got the exact same options to a voicemail and search for that voicemail uh, M365 group in here. Alternatively, I can actually play a complete different set of options out of hours. So if you had uh, some sort of follow the sun contact center or, or, or support line, you can do a completely different set of options, whether in hours, out of hours, pass to an emergency line, something like that, for example. Next, we have holidays. So the notion of holidays can also be added to these queues. So we can come inside of here and add a particular holiday. Um, you can choose to create a new one or choose uh, one that's already been created against the tenant. So for example, we have a snow day example here that's been chose and we can choose completely different set of greetings that are played and uh, the calls can be routed differently depending on when this time of day is actually chose. So these holidays are very set of forget. So you can come to your call flows, choose the snow day, um, choose the example of holidays, uh, choose what the routing options are, just press apply. When that time of the year rolls around or those days roll around, you won't actually need to come into the call queues to turn them on. It will automatically happen. Next on our auto attendant, we have the dial scope. So this is the section, if you are gonna use a dial by name or a dial by extension functionality for your queues, uh, you may not want everybody to be available or searchable by those queues. So what you can do is you can choose to include or exclude um, user groups from here, add an Office 365 or a security group in here, and that will choose to include them or exclude them from your dial by name. This is the section that's talking around resource accounts. Very simply put, a resource account is a free license or a free account that sits in your tenant that holds a number for you that you're able to use within your PBX for things like auto attendance and call queues. So in here, what we can see is we've got two resource accounts, one named test AA, one named shared calling, and numbers assigned to those and we have added this these resource accounts to this particular auto attendant. So when any of these numbers are dialed, they will hit this auto attendant in this demo environment, okay? So you can, if you wanted to, have multiple numbers. Let's say over the years you've been giving out numbers to, uh, or you've been changing numbers throughout and you don't wanna lose any customer calls ringing back in. You can have multiple resource accounts and numbers assigned to the same auto attendant. This also helps with administration as well. So if you have a shared office, maybe across uh, the whole of Spain, for example, you can configure one auto attendant and have multiple numbers from different regions pointing to that same auto attendant um, for uh, administrative purposes. So you only have to make changes once and that will make the change across all of your um, Spanish offices. The last option that we have in here is authorized users. So I'll make another video going into authorized users a little bit more, but these are the users that you would like to give the ability to make specific changes against your auto attendant. For, so for example, if this was my mainline number, I may want to give uh, the head receptionist the ability to make changes to greetings for this particular queue. Uh, and this is where we do that. We can add those authorized users directly in here. So that was a brief overview of auto attendance. Um, next, we'll probably go into uh, call queues. So if there are any questions or and any comments, please leave them below uh, and I will look to answer them. Thank you very much.